Well, I've been getting a lot of questions on this aquaponics deal here. So let me kind of go over just a couple things. We'll start at this point. This is known as a sump tank. See all the plumbing? What happens is this bucket here holds the, holds the pump, 1,800 gallon an hour pump, and it pumps that way to the grow beds. Keys off here, goes over here, up to the IBC tank, and then inside. And this is where all the fish are located. Okay. <clears throat> For drainage, as I mentioned before, this is called a slow. It goes to the bottom of the tank and sucks from the bottom, just uh, gravity feed, fills up the tube, comes back over, down here, and discharges back into the sump. Okay? Now, it's a camera phone, so it's jerky. This tee here in the main feed line to the fish tank, got a valve in it, goes into this five gallon bucket, it's designed so that at the bottom, the water exits down there and swirls around in a circle. Centrifugal force and the weight of the solids all settle into the bottom and around the sides. And in the middle is the overflow. So it drains us from there. See all the dirt? All the dirt down there? I ran this a year without one of these. I just built it yesterday. That's 24 hours of accumulation. And then it just overflows back down to the sub tank. This other two inch pipe is the main drain line from all the grow beds. Okay. Still a few goldfish in here that didn't want to get captured, but that's fine because when I feed the main fish tank, some of the food comes in here and they can eat that up. So, to the greenhouse. Everything is built on uh, two by fours. And on the legs, I doubled them up. One's a little longer than the other. So it screws into the back side of here. And then it's notched so this board rests on here. There's spaced evenly all the way down. These are beets. <laughs> but essentially, this is the feed line from the pump. It runs all the way down to the bottom here. It comes up into here, goes into the gravel beds. Now you can also use the stuff called Hydrotron, which are clay pellets. A little bit lighter, but they're expensive. I chose to go with pea gravel, because if you take a little jar of uh, white vinegar with you to like Home Depot, for example, there's always gravel laying on the ground. Put it inside the jar, and if it doesn't bubble, then it's pH neutral. Otherwise, it'll be too alkaline. But these beds also act as a filter for all the fish waste and excess food that gets pumped into, into here. Now, when it gets pumped in, there's ammonia from the fish, from the waste. And then that ammonia, through a bacterial process, is, changes it into nitrites, R-I-T-E-S. And then bacteria change the nitrites into nitrates, which grows these guys. Plants love it. You can see all the nice green foliage. Some more beets, some squash, Roma tomatoes. I think there's one hiding in here. There's one. These plants are about a month old. And I grew these out of 12-year-old seeds that I just scattered, well not really scattered, put a furl in like that, drop the seeds in, cover them up, and there they are. Each tank also has a valve on it to control the flow, because flow control is important 
when you're using these guys. These are known as a bell siphon. The water fills up to that standpipe, theoretically about four inches below the level of the gravel. And when it does, it starts draining down through there. It creates a suction in here, and all the water just goes all the way down. At the same time it's doing that, it's also pouring oxygen down through the gravel. We can speed the process up here to show you. Turn the, let's turn the valve on a little fuller. And the other thing, because of all the solids and, and the waste and things that don't get filtered out, or that stay in the grill bed, it's also important to put red wigglers. Those composting worms, contrary to popular opinion, they will live in a wet environment. And that way, any kind of uh, you know plant waste or excess fish food or whatever, they'll eat that down and help break it down into a finer component. As you can see, this is starting to fill up. Yeah, we'll give it a minute. It's not going to take long. There's a lot of water going to this bed right now, and there it starts to drain. Okay, put this guy back on. I don't know if you can see it with this little fancy phone camera, but we'll give it a shot. If not, it's very turbulent. But you can see how far it's drained. Anyway, those will go down into this two inch pipe with keys that run all the way down. More rummus. And it runs all the way down. And drops into there. Now you can use bigger rock and stuff. I did that at first. So it was red lava rock and some of the bigger gravel. It's kind of a mistake because it gets hard on your hands and whatnot. So generally what I've been doing is I'll replace or clean out the beds. I put all the big stuff down the bottom, and then I put the peat gravel on top. This bed hasn't been touched in a while. It had a bunch of cucumbers in it that I just pulled out. Now it has some um, peppers in it. These are grape tomatoes. This is one plant. <laughs> and then this one's a floating raft as an experiment. Experiment I kind of screwed up on because this foam insulation that you get from Home Depot is too porous and not thick enough. So it's, it's going to get replaced here. Good. That's one of the onion plants with all the root systems. They're hard to get out right now. But they will be getting out because they're going over to this side. And this side. This barrel here is going to replace the floating raft barrel. So all the ones on the other side are all gravel. That one barrel will continue to be a floating raft. These will be done. I'm going to try some of that uh, hydroton on these guys to see if the onions will grow in here because it's lighter. And it might give the, the development of the bulbs a little bit more. I don't know. Like I said before, it's all an experiment. So that's basically it. You can do it really simple if you wanted to. If you wanted to, you could take two barrels, cut one and a half like this, lengthways, take the second barrel, put it down underneath, put your pump in it, let it pump up, and drain back into that, throw some goldfish that are cheap, buy feeders at you know, like the pet department in Paso Robles is really inexpensive. You know, get a half dozen or so or a dozen, toss the little critters in there. That's what I have in there. They've been in about a year now, plus a couple of channel cats. And fill them up with um, the Hydrotron, and you're all set. And you can make a nicer bench if you want to go for aesthetics. You can wrap these. You can do whatever you want with them. But it's really cheap and easy to actually get started in it. I started with one little thing. About like that, sitting out there. 
and uh, it's expanding. So be forewarned. If you get get in it, you can get hooked, and it's not hard to do. Benefits: number one, no gophers, no soil amendments, no rototilling, no pulling the weeds, no spraying for bugs. Although this uh, summer I had all the glass out of the greenhouse. Every once in a while I'd come out like on the tomato plants the other day. Just uh, picked off some tomato worms. Um, cabbage is coming back. Some of the later cabbage that had heads on it had uh, cabbage worms, but you can pick them off. It's not that hard. Or you can use a natural product like Seven. Because according to the website, it's not harmful to pets or kids or fish. And uh, other than adding a little uh, chelated iron every once in a while, when the plants start turning yellow, that's about it. Not a whole lot to it. Takes up less space. You can pack these suckers in here. I mean, let's see. These are all the beets. This is my second planting. And the beets were all about the size of a hardball. No pesticides. No nothing. The fish is the main engine to it. It's all natural. It's a symbiotic relationship between the plants and the fish. Feed the goldfish about every other day or every three or four days, depending on what your water test is. Get an API freshwater test kit. At first, test the water once a week. There's some really good websites. There's one called backyardaquaponics.com. And uh, at the top of the page, there's a uh, a link to their forums, a lot of useful information in there. It's worldwide, so you get a lot of Aussies in there, so you get a lot of stuff in the metric, like you know, liters and centimeters. A lot of great YouTube videos. Uh, Rob's Backyard on YouTube has a lot of good info. Aquaponics USA, if you go to their website, <coughs> they have a whole education thing where it goes chapter by chapter I'm building a whole system they also sell them you know if you want to pay that much but you could build one of these for complete for I don't know 7500 bucks I used all my scrounge around for a lot of the parts I had later on the property you know these barrels gallon templeton that has a olive orchard they always have these these are full of uh, olive oil at one point Cut them in half, clean them out. The IBC tank came from some guys up in King City. They do organic vineyards. It had a, a molasses in it that they used for spraying on their plants to attract beneficial insects. They also have them that had fish emulsion in it. So beware when you buy IBC tanks. Even though they say they're food grade, but you don't know what was happened between the original buyer and you. Especially, like, I'm going to put rainbow trout in there, and I'm going to, we eat this stuff, but if somebody has some nasty pesticides in there, you know, you sure you want that in your food dish? It's bad enough just buying crap in the supermarket. So that's about the extent of it. These are all on bell siphons. The advantage of bell siphon is that <coughs> you don't have to have timers for your pump. This drains continuously. Um, there's another type of system called constant flood that some people use. And on the base of the standpipe, they drill a small hole and they got a timer for the, their pump and it shuts it off about every three or four hours or something like that. But, you know, the pumps don't draw anything. And that's really about it. It's pretty simple. You can get crazy with this, which I plan on doing. Once this is done, and then the back of the greenhouse gets clean, cleaned out, you just build the bed with a big liner in it. You know, three feet, three feet wide is perfect, because that way you can reach it. These tanks are 33 inches long. I'm standing here, you know, I'm six foot. So if you're smaller than that, you know, you reach way back here, pose some difficulty and whatnot. So, you know, you build them accordingly. You know, if I wanted to, you can build it down the center. 
fill the tanks lower where you can reach them. That's the one thing I screwed up on. I should have built these tanks, the rack, a little bit lower. But then I would have had to have dug into the ground to, to sink the, the sump tank. I didn't feel like digging, especially here at the west side of Tascadero, where it's rock with a little bit of dirt on top. You know, your mileage may vary. That's it.